worship and tell him the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I can never repay you for the things that you've done for me. But the least thing I can do is lift my hands and sort of and raise it up to you, Lord. up on your feet tonight if you know God is. He's everything to you. Everything that you need and want. Oh, yeah. Come on, everybody, just put a clap in the room. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Come on, I need everybody. Joy and the strength of my life. Yeah. He moves on pain, misery, and strife. Yeah. Promise to keep me, never leave me. That is word I've got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. Come too far and I'll never turn back no Strength of my life. 
3 and 20 says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all 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 that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in, worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end let us pray father we bless you savior king my redeemer my strength my source my lord my provider we thank you lord god because you are a loving god you are a powerful god you are a consistent god a faithful god you are the king of kings and the lord of lords you are the first and the last the beginning and the end and so here we are father with our arms outstretched not asking but referencing who you are to tell you thank you lord thank you father for what you've done for us thus far we thank you lord god that you had allowed us to see a day that we've never seen god this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in this so we tell you thank you lord jesus thank you lord god that you allowed us to go to and from today lord god with no hurt harm or danger but lord we thank you but now that we've come into the sanctuary we reverence your presence oh god we summon you into the room we know that you're here but we we extend the invitation to let you know that lord you're welcome in this place welcome to do what you want to do welcome to feel who you want to feel welcome to save who you want to save lord you're welcome Father, we ask that you would just bless each and every person that comes into this house tonight, Lord God. Some struggle to get here. Honor the sacrifice, God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you bless each and every person that came, Lord God, that had a press in them, God. Honor it tonight. Don't let them leave here the same way they came, Father. Lord, do something special for us. But for the purpose of the gathering, God, we thank you for our leader. Oh, we thank you for a pastor, not just a shepherd that just wants to be seen. Oh, but a pastor that prays. We thank you for a leader that leads. We thank you for a pastor that prays. We thank you for a pastor that covers. And so we honor him tonight, Lord God. We ask that you touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. You can't bless him and not bless what's attached to him. Bless First Lady and the First Family, God, and we'll honor you. We give you reverence in this place tonight. Have your way. Lord, let this not just be another Wednesday night gathering, but my expectation is high. I didn't come to church because I didn't have nothing else to do. Oh, but my expectation is high tonight, God. Do something for us. This is the last place for some of us. What are we going to do if we can't get to the sanctuary? So now that we're here, God, do what you need to do for us tonight. Give us an experience. Give us a move, God. Do it like only you can. And we'll give you praise. Uh, we'll make the sound that you're looking for. We'll tell you we love you. We'll tell you we bless you. We'll tell you you're worthy. We'll tell you thank you. In the name of Jesus, uh, we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. And we'll give you praise in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. Is the place for you and me. New Zion. There's a word that says you're free. New Zion. New 
Join us tomorrow at our Indianapolis location, located at 4407 Lafayette Road, Indianapolis, Indiana. Our guest speaker is Dr. E. Dewey Smith at the 7 p.m. hour Eastern Standard Time. Join us this coming Friday for our 90s musical, NZT Wow Gospel Edition, starting at the hour of 7 p.m., 926 Eastmore Street, Hammond, Indiana. Worship with us all day Sunday at the hour of 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pastor J.R. McDonald will be the guest speaker. 4407 Lafayette Row, Indianapolis, Indiana. Follow me along in the Chicagoland area, 12.30 p.m. Bishop Brian Moore will be the guest speaker. 926 Eastmore Street, Hammond, Indiana. Following at 6 p.m. at our Hammond campus, Bishop Marvin Sapp will be our Ignite speaker. Don't forget to donate your candy for Hallelujah Night, taking place at both locations October 31st, 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. See all youth leaders for more information. These have been your evening announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly. In Peace New Zion Temple and our guests on tonight, are you happy to be in the house of God? Come on and clap your hands if you are happy to be alive and well. Come on, it is a Wednesday night and we are here to give God glory and praise. Do me a favor on tonight, stand up all over the room. It is a special occasion on tonight. I want you to clap your hands and open your mouth and let's celebrate our pastor, our founder, Bishop Brandon A. Jacob Sr. Come on and clap your hands. For 16 years of ministry, pastoral ministry, come on, clap your hands for my pastor. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. We praise God for our leader and shepherd, and we must not forget what we call the fragrance of the house, our executive pastor, in the person of Vivian Jacobs. Clap your hands. And we bless God for her and the first family. You may be seated. Again, thank you for coming out on tonight with us. We want you to, I heard someone say this last week when they gave a welcome. Don't relax, but we want you to get involved as God has his way in the place on tonight. Now you're in the hands of the choir.
is power. You ought to put your hands on it like that. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, y'all not clapping. Everybody, clap your hands.
Jesus loves. He loves to hear the sound of praise. What does your praise sound like? What does your worship sound like? You want to lift your voice and say, Oh, yes, we sing. Oh, to the master, oh, to the savior. We give you all of our worship. If you know he's worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor, come on, open your mouth and give him high praise all over this building. Oh, I need to hear you. Somebody who didn't come to be entertained, but you came for a move of God on a Wednesday night. Let me hear you open up your mouth and give him glory like the Lord's been good to you. Oh, come on, I can't hear you. I said praise him like he's been good to you. Hallelujah! I'm double whole shot. Glory to God. Listen, do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know we don't do it no more. Tell them that's testimony service. But say, if you don't mind, we're going to have it tonight. Look at him and say, first give an honor to God, who's the head of my life, bishop, members, and friends. Now tell them one thing the Lord did for you that you couldn't do for yourself. Woo. Just in case that neighbor's still looking a little crazy, find the person behind you and tell them, first give an honor to God. Who's the head of my life? Bishop, members, and friends. I just want to tell you one thing that the Lord's done for me that I couldn't do for myself. Now tell them what he did. Now after you testify, throw your head back and shout. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Look at somebody tell them, he's been good to me. Oh, yes. yes. Lord, I hear a shout in this house. Somebody throw your head back and shout. Hallelujah. Hey, Aya. praise him like he brought you out of something. Praise him like he shifted something. Praise him like he's turned something around. Praise him like you're glad to be in the service one more time. Oh, yes. Hey, glory. 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 I know they told you it's anniversary service and we're supposed to be cute and sedated. But that ain't what I come to do. I come to praise him because he's been good to me. They told me 
16 years ago we wouldn't make it six months but here we are two locations later he been good to us hey hiya he been good to us hiya everybody who counted you out wasn't counting right because they left god out the equation you was counting but you didn't count right you counted in the natural but in the spirit god saw something bigger just prophesy to your whole row and tell them i see bigger i see bigger hiya i see bigger i see bigger than what it is right now i see bigger than what you have right now i see bigger than what they told you i see bigger than what you possess i see bigger than what they said what's going somebody how i see bigger i don't need a whole lot of you but if you agree with me then you're gonna leap it like you see bigger too leap for the bigger shout for the bigger scream for the bigger holler for the bigger bigger brighter and better yes i see bigger i know in my behind yes sir Not he gonna do it, Spence, but he's doing it. Even right now, he's doing it. Bigger, brighter, better. Bigger, brighter, better. Bigger, brighter, better. Bigger, brighter, better. Yes! You shut up. Don't play, because it is a party, ain't it? Shayla already told me, she said, I know what you're going to say. It's your party, and you can do what you want to. I can, y'all ain't talk. Hiya. So since we're here, we might as well praise him. I let somebody take about 30 seconds and put a praise on that bigger, brighter, and better. Because you believe God's going to.
you see, pull him down and tell him he's been good to me. He's been good to me. Real good. So good. Yeah. I love God. Grace and peace be unto you. From God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. God is good. 16 years ago, we started this church with no building, no money, no nothing but rumors. Where well, did you start with rumors? Y'all ain't talking. But they kept on talking until God kept moving. They gossiped and we kept building. Aya! Yeesh! And I won't forget what the Lord has done for us. We started having church in the Boys and Girls Club. And they talked about the church that was having church in a gym. But we shouted at the three-point line. Y'all ain't talking. Shouted inbounds and out of bounds. But here we are. Because he's been good to us. And we praise him for how good he's been. When we started, I didn't have a wife, no kids, no nothing. And now here I am married with five kids. Lord Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for my beautiful wife tonight. Oh, come on. That's how you do it. I'm a better man because of my wife. God is, God is good. And I, I thank God for every ministry, every person that has sacrificed Many of you all been here since day one. Through storms, trials, and tribulations, you've been right here. And we thank God for you being here and standing with me. Listen, I want to be a blessing on tonight to myself. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Glory to God. Ain't no gimmicks or schemes. Amen. We just doing what we doing. Amen. Thank God for the interest of our guest tonight, Bishop Marvin Wiley. Y'all ain't never came in through that way. But he's here. <laughs> Something must be wrong with the back door. <laughs> Come on. Uh-uh, Bishop. Yeah, you take the middle. No, you take the big seat. You the bishop tonight. <laughs> we love God and we thank God for Bishop tonight. Amen. Listen, our assessment is 139 because not only are we celebrating 16 years in ministry and the starting of this church, but we're also celebrating 39 years of life on October 17th. Lord have mercy. I started to get angry, but my godmother told me the fact that you made it, you better tell God thank you because somebody didn't make it. Huh? And I'm glad to be right here. So listen, we want to do that. I want y'all to be a blessing tonight. Amen. Do you love your pastor? Yeah. All right. So we shouldn't have to beg nobody to do nothing. Huh? We shouldn't have to beg to do what's right. And so I want you all to do that. I want y'all to give your assessments tonight. If, 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 if uh, you've already given or if you... Amen. Say, I'm not giving that. I want you to give something. We thank God. We have 1,100 watching on YouTube. Can you clap your hands for that? How many we got on Facebook, baby? Let me see. Help me out. You and everybody else be scared to give me their phone. Something going to come through. But this phone is safe. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know how I can't see the number. Now I know I gotta start wearing glass, glasses now. That is two, we got 290 on Facebook. We got over 1,400 people. Can we clap our hands for our virtual church? So this is what I need tonight between our virtual church and our church inside. If, amen, if you're not sewing the 139, I want you to at least get $39 in your hand and stand. Can we do that tonight? I can't hear you. Can you do that tonight? Those of you who are giving your assessments to 139, I need you to get an envelope so we know who you are. And if you don't want to get an envelope, Sister Shirley, you taking names? We're going to come on up here. Come on, look at you. Go on, Sister Shirley. Amen. Come on, right here. Are you going to stay right there? It's easier. She don't want nobody. She hate for y'all to look at her. 
Amen. But listen, I want you to come see Sister Shirley, see Sister Shirley and turn in your assessments tonight. Come on, we're standing all over this building. I want to get Bishop up so he can have more than enough time to do what he needs to do. Can we do that tonight? Amen. I need everybody to give tonight. Amen. The Bible says love is an action word. Amen. Which means if you love me, then you'll do something about it. Amen. So either you're sowing your 139 uh, you're sowing $39. Well, I want to challenge you to sow a seed with a nine attached. $9, $19, $29, $39, $49, $59. Amen. Glory to God. Get it and stand all over. 900 I received that. Amen. I believe somebody going to sow 900 Somebody may sow 9000 tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for all these pastors I see in the building. Come on, man of God. Get pastor. Amen. Why are you back there? Come. You want to sit there? I honor you, man of God. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Spencer. Thank God, my friend from Chicago. Amen. Pastor Coleman. Amen. Thank you, man. God is good. And thank God for spiritual sons that's in the house tonight. Amen. Uh, pastor Arbel Hodges drove all the way from Arkansas to be with his pastor tonight. Come on, sir. Hair just growing. Amen. <laughs> Thank God, Pastor Flanagan, amen. We're installing him in March. Come on, clap your hands. I said, we're installing him in March. And I want us to pack that place out. I want, us to have, I want them to have to put us in the basement. Amen, there's so many of us. And then Pastor Jarrell McDonald started at his new church on this past Sunday. He's pastor in two locations. Come on. Come on, y'all, make some noise. Come on, when your leader expands, you expand. And we thank God, amen, for how God is expanding. Amen. We're standing all over the building with our gifts and seeds in our hand. They told me that my daddy's back there. Y'all, he didn't left me. He said he didn't want to live with me no more. Amen. Come on, Dad. Wave your hand. Everybody been asking, where you at? Amen. <laughs> He's in the back. He called me and said, I'm going to come celebrate you for your anniversary, but I'm going to get all my stuff. <laughs> But I love my daddy. Amen. We're standing all over the building. Put that seat in your right hand and lift it high. Come on. If you're not standing, I need you to stand. I need you to stand. We don't want to walk over nobody. Put it in your right hand and declare it with me. I am blessed. Everything I touched is blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming. And I'm blessed going. Now, Lord, I'm doing my best to be a blessing tonight. This is my season to flourish in Jesus name. Amen. Starting from the rear. Come on. I need everybody to give. Amen. Starting from the rear. Come on. Feasting on manna from hell. That is why I'm happy tonight. Josiah, the window, the windows of hell. Come on. Help me say fire is falling. Tonight. I've got joy, 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 since Jesus What did you do? And he gave me, gave me a And I'm feasting on That is why I'm happy tonight. Reverend Grant, I miss you, man. The window. The fire is falling tonight. I've got joy. I've got joy, joy, joy in my soul. Since Jesus, Jesus made everything right. What did you do? I stayed in my own filthy darkness. And he gave me, he gave me a robe of pure wine. And I'm feasting on manna from heaven. Hey, that is why I'm happy. 
your hands if you gave it up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. Thank you for those who had, those who had not in our virtual church and in our physical. Pray that you bless us and increase us, that there's no lack nowhere. And we'll praise you for the victory even now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. All those in agreement said, Amen. Where's PJ? Pete, tell PJ, come in. Tell him run in real quick. Hallelujah. God is amazing, isn't he? Listen, tomorrow night, amen, we're going to be at our Indianapolis location. Amen. Glory to God. And we have Dr. E. Dewey Smith going to be with us tomorrow night at our Indianapolis location. Come on. Amen. And then on Sunday, Friday night, our choir is having a 90s musical. Amen. Listen, if y'all haven't bought our, our single yet, I want, I want y'all to go get it. Amen. We on, I don't know what number we are on the Billboard charts yet. Amen. But tell me. Amen. They'll tell me whatever it is. We're praying for Elder Jason. They had to take him to the hospital. Amen. Thank you. And so we're going to be, uh, so get the CD if you haven't got it. The, the single is 99 cents. Do we have any more hard copies left? No more hard copies. All sold out. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. But listen, uh, I want y'all to get, go online, go on iTunes and buy it. Amen. Featuring uh, uh, Pastor John P. Key is on there with us. Amen. Clap your hands for that. Amen. It's, 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 it's going to be, it's, a, it's an amazing single and I think that you'll be uh, blessed by it. And we're doing really, really well right now and I thank God for it. Amen. Uh, but we thank God that we have Brother Kevin Mumford with us. Amen. Tonight. Hallelujah. And I know they're going to do their good singing. Glory to God. Amen. Now what's your name again? Tribe of Favor. Taba. Yes, sir. Tribe of Favor. And we want to hear them. And, and after that, listen, Bishop Marvin Winans is probably, amen, one of the most anointed, amen, preachers and male vocalists of our time. Oh, you could do better than that. I was so blessed, amen, when I went. You know, you see people all the time on TV and, and all over the place and, and, and doing what they do. And when you meet them, to see that they're as humble and human as ever, it kind of blows you away. And I got the chance to, to preach with him, and he was so kind and humble when I went. And I just thank God for him. And I'm honored that he took time out of his busy schedule to stop by New Zion Temple. Come on, New Zion, can we thank God for that? People don't have to be nice, and people don't have to come when you invite them. Amen. But he is here tonight. Amen. I hope he sang a little bit. There, there was this one song that he sung. And I'm not telling him he got to sing it, but I sure would. Amen. And I don't know if he recorded, but it's I keep loving him over and over. Oh, falling in love with him over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love. Oh, see, thank you. See? <laughs> and I want him to do what he does but whatever the Lord leads him to do we want to say yes Lord to it is that all right and so I'm getting out the way and when after they get done whatever this is going to be perfecting church after uh, they get done singing and we're going to submit to the anointing on his life and this is what I need when he mounts this podium I want us to stand in honor of his office can we do that uh, but let's clap our hands and receive Kevin Mumford and triumph of favor in Jesus name
Praise God. Wonderful job. I'm happy to see a choir in a row. <laughs> Come on and give God praise for his kindness. This is my first time here, although it's not my first time in Hammond. I praise God for being here tonight. Father, it is the entrance of thy word that bringeth light and life. We pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine bright as always. May the people be blessed by thee and never impressed by me. Cause through the revelation of thy word these thy people to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more dearly. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and every glad heart said amen. Would you put those hands together and really give God praise for his kindness. And while you are standing and applauding, let's praise God for the angel of this house, the one and the only, Bishop Mark Jacobs. Come on, let's give God praise like we... Did I say the wrong name? Brandon, I'm sorry. And I ain't gonna change no... Now we gotta clap all over again because I gave him the wrong name. <laughs> Pastor Bishop Brandon Jacobs. I guess I was thinking about clothes. He'd be so sharp. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm assuming this is his wife. Come on, let's give God... I just... It's a pleasure to meet you. This is my first time meeting her. And to all of you that are here, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today we do honor the Lord and we thank God for his faithfulness. And we praise God. I mean, as we were coming, we had it on. Uh, and um, he could have kept right on preaching. You know, he was just exhorting. I was wondering why he had me here to embarrass me uh, but we praise God he came to preach for us and uh, it was amazing it was just it was amazing it was old time church it was church that I grew up in it was up the road a piece Mother Boyd was here right in Gary I used to come up here just to fast and pray Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, he's a mighty God. So I thank God for what he is doing and that his word is still right. And holiness is still right. Thank you, Jesus. I saw a couple of people here from Perfecting. Would you stand? I know Brother Davion is here. Stand, Brother Davion. And Sister, uh, Sister, <laughs> Sister Antoinette and her husband, praise God. We praise God for them making the sacrifice to come. I wish I had a voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I wouldn't sing the song he wanted me to sing. The song that would be on my heart would be, I have heard thy voice. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love for me. How I long to rise. In the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw. Nearer, blessed Lord, 
to thy precious bleeding side. Go to F. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast love and my will be lost in thine draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer oh nearer blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding to grab your Bibles, Matthew 4, to thy precious bleeding side. Was it for crimes that I had done? He hung upon the tree. Amazing pity and grace unknown and love beyond degree hallelujah alas and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? I don't know where you got saved, but at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Everybody say yeah. yeah, 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 Matthew 4, the, the 23rd through the 25th verse, Matthew 4, those of you that are watching by way of streaming, Matthew 4, uh, my wife is watching. I hope she's watching. My mother's watching. I, I know she's watching. So all of you that are watching, if you would turn Matthew 4, 23 through 25. Hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of 
sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils, those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitude from Galilee, from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. So far, the text. We want to extrapolate our subject from the 24th verse. <clears throat> and his fame went throughout all Syria. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't fight the fame. That's what we want to talk about. You may be seated if you'll just, if you'll stay with me just for <clears throat> a little while. What is amazing to me is the downplay of who it is we serve. We make a lot of noise. We say a lot of things. Do we really believe that he's all of that? You know, I, I miss that Jean said I had to be saved and then backslide and and recommit <laughs> because when I got saved I believed that Jesus was the best thing that could ever happen he wasn't a place marker he wasn't something that I did until I found out something else I thought Jesus was it. Yes, they preached to me enough, but I believed what they were saying. I believed that God was who he said he was, that there was no variance in him at all. That uh, he did not change that he would be the same yesterday, today, <clears throat> and forever. I hope I'm not boring you. In a moment, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my preacher's voice and everything. When you have proper foundation of who Jesus is, then you don't look for anything better because if it's anything better, he's going to give it to you. 
It is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. And it is in him that we have our being. I, I, you know, I, I just don't think we publicize or represent God in the proper manner. That the devil makes us afraid of success. That when things start going well, when things start moving in a positive direction, then we get real nervous. Uh, something must be wrong. Church is growing too fast. They must not be preaching the truth. They must not be living holy. You can have 10 members. I'm sorry, I really, I didn't mean to. Let me, you can have 10 members and five of them full of the devil. As a matter of fact, if we use the bath, uh, biblical mathematics, Jesus said 12 of you are chosen and one of y'all is the devil. So out of every 12 members, you got a, it's a possibility you got a devil up in there. I don't hear nobody talking to me. And, and, and I say this to our beloved pastor and bishop. Um, that people do not take into consideration what Jesus prophesies when the Holy Spirit speaks in your life. God did not call you because you were something extraordinary. He knew you were ordinary. All of the preachers at our church have to learn verbatim the fifth chapter of Hebrews. And it says, for every high priest who is taken from among men must be ordained of God in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for that he himself has infirmities. See, God didn't save you because you were uh, problem free. He didn't anoint you because you didn't have any issues. Come on, sir. Uh, just, just give me about five more minutes. I'm, I'm just But he didn't allow whatever your infirmities or handicaps were to stop him from choosing you. If there's anything I'm happy about, I'm glad that God did not go into committee with you to see if he could anoint me. Now let me move to my lesson. I mean, the intent may have been good, but uh, it created a problem. Now listen, don't you, don't get out there and forget it was God. And just because people call your name, that don't mean don't, don't get lifted up in that. Because God will cut you down. So, you know, it, the intent might have been good, but... It creates a barrier in your mind that when you see success coming, you are fearful of it. Not recognizing that if we read that fourth chapter of Matthew, the um, 14th verse, 
it says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah, the prophet saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthalim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Yes. Now you'll find this prophecy in Isaiah the ninth chapter, the first and second verse. But here's the point. The point is that when God anointed you, he included the fame. Yes. Wow. Yes. Why anoint you and keep you a secret? Come on. And so what happens is that we stymie the move of God because we're conflicting in our intellect whether or not we can handle and we don't want God to be upset because people are calling on us. Yes. I promise you, God is not intimidated with your success as a matter of fact he promotes it give me about 12 more minutes and I'm going to put a bow on it everyone everyone that God calls he expects them to prosper yeah. wherever he called them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the gospel is different from selling insurance <laughs> or selling real estate or having a business. Yeah. They tell you all the time, if, if you're going to be successful, location, location, location. Yeah. God doesn't need location. Oh. Ask John. He was in the wilderness out somewhere in Jordan. And the Bible says that all of Jerusalem came out to where he was. Because if you're going to be used of God, what you need is anointing, anointing, anointing. Y'all not going to talk back to me. I promise you that the anointing is an irresistible commodity. People don't want it, but they can't help it because it draws them. And when we search the scriptures, we, we see that God has always been like that. He said in Genesis 12 and 1, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Watch this. And I will make of thee a great nation. Not a mediocre nation. Not an average nation. Not a subservient nation. I'm going to make you a great nation. Here, it gets better right here. And I will bless thee. Here it is. And make thy name great. So now, stop worrying about God being upset because your name is great. Yes. Remind your neighbor the subject, say, neighbor. neighbor. Y'all ain't saying it like I'm saying it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Don't, fight the Don't fight the fame. God said, I'm going to make your name great. Yes. Folk are going to know your name. Moses uh, after Moses gives him every excuse in the world as to why he couldn't do it he said Lord I'm slow of speech I have a slow tongue I just can't get my words right 
He said, but I'm the one that made your tongue. Well, that's a dance right there. Uh, you're trying to give God all the reasons as to why you can't do what he's calling you to do as if he's looking for you to do it. All he wants you to do is say yes and let him have his way. Moses got on God's nerves because he kept pushing that issue. He said, I'm going, I can't talk, Lord. And that's the first thing they're going to want. They want to hear how I put my words together. They want to know how I'm doing. I, 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 you know, I'm not able to do all this. And he kept pushing it. So God told him, said, listen, I'm going to talk to you. And you talk to Aaron. And Aaron will talk to the people. He said, but you, now watch this. Here we go, here we go. I, 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 want, I want to read it to you because I don't want y'all to think I'm making something, must, something up. He says to, 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 to Moses in the, in the uh, third chapter, well, the fourth chapter, he said, I made your tongue. I made the deaf, the blind, I did all of that. And this is what he says in that 15th verse. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you should say or, or what shall, ye shall do. Watch the 16th verse. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people and he shall be even shall be to thee instead of a mouth and thou shalt be to him instead of God. Uh, let me just deal with this just for a few moments. See, we, the, the problem with us is we've lost our respect for God. Well, I love God. <laughs> You've lost your respect for God. Uh, because when you do not honor the man of God... And you think the words that come out of his mouth, well, that's just, that's just Brandon. That's just the bishop. You've lost sight of who it is. And what I've discovered is that you can only receive of God if you perceive that it is God. And when the man of God mounts the rostrum, and begins to speak the word of God. You cannot allow other folk to belittle him. And make you think that he's nothing but just. He just as one man told me. He said uh, uh, Pastor Miners I don't know what's going on at Perfecting. But in the Baptist church the preacher is just a hired help. Well, when you see that he's just hired help, you cannot hear that God is speaking through him. And that's the reason there's so much challenging and so much commotion because you don't think it's God. You have to change the way you see him in order to receive him as the man of God. Now, I know some folk don't want to hear me preach like this, but I want you to understand you don't have to worry about the man of God because God got him in check. I want you to know that you have to respect God enough to say, Lord, whatever you say. If there's any difference in the old church and the church we got now is everybody challenging. And then if you don't do what they say, they go up the street and say, God sent me over. He ain't sending you nowhere. You just rebellious. That's all. But it's best for you to leave because if you don't see it as God sees it, then you're hindering the whole work. This is Aaron. This is the blood brother of Moses. And God says to him, you can't see him as Momo. You can't see him as Momo no more. You got to see him as God. No, I know, I know not. All right, let's go to the seventh chapter of Exodus. And it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. The world should think something special 
is happening here at New Zion Temple. Not because of the choir, not because of the band, not because of the ushers. I don't hear nobody talking to me. And we need all of you. But the reason they'll come is because the man of God stands with the word of God coming out of his mouth. Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth, if don't nobody else think I'm an apostle, you ought to think so. Sitting up in here, messing folk up. And I remember when he was this. I, no, sir. I rebuke it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We got to see him as the man of God that speaks the word of God. Now let me, let me deal with my, with my, with my lesson. Jesus. Jesus has just left the mount of temptation. My soul says yes. He, uh, he comes out on the winning side devil has been defeated and he's been defeated because of the word because every time the devil came at him he said it's written see you you got to praise God when you have a man of God that preaches the word he don't preach he doesn't preach science today he doesn't preach what's trending preach the word that's the problem the devil has. He has a problem with the word because he can't handle the truth. He can't handle the word. And that's what makes the enemy run. When you keep preaching the word, hallelujah. Jesus said, don't get nervous about it because men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But Paul told Timothy, you preach the word. There are gonna be time when they don't wanna hear, time they don't wanna hear. But don't you let that change you. Preach the word and be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Because the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. We got everybody jumping, but don't nobody have any doctrine. And the doctrine is what regulates your worship. You can't worship right without doctrine. Jesus, yes, sit down. I'm, I'm about to be through. You can stand up as long as you want. You the bishop. Jesus, let's just walk through the mount of temptation. He's rebuked the enemy, and the devil has left him for a season. He's being ministered to by the angels comes down off the mountain and uh, he begins to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and if we, if we run this reference just to the third chapter we see that that was the same message John preached because uh, you can't get it until you get right and repent means I've turned from my way I'm just about finished, and I've turned to what God says. That's the problem in the world. It isn't that God can't heal from homosexuality. It's that you want to think it's right. You can't get right till you repent. That's, that's the problem. The problem is we think that we can pin God on to whatever we're doing, and that's not how it works. He's still saying, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Lord, y'all going to make me preach. Oh, I want you to understand that God has not changed. His word has not changed. He's calling for the same thing. 
Sit down just for a moment, just for a moment. He says, he says, repent. Because the kingdom is at hand. Sunday after watching what happened in Jerusalem, my message Sunday morning and afternoon was, it's closer than you think. Oh yeah, he's coming back. I'm, I don't have an eschatological message tonight, but I want you to know he's coming back. He came off the mountain and began to do what it is God had anointed him to do. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, there's so many charlatans out here. What's going to be the thing that distinguishes the true from the false? And this is what he told me. It was a one word answer. He said, power. And ye shall receive. Y'all not going to talk back to me. Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, I didn't come to you with the excellency of man's speech, but I came to you in the demonstration and power of the Spirit that your faith might not be in the words of man's wisdom, but in the power of God. Somebody holler back at me, power. 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 Jesus came off the mountain and be, began to operate in the power of his calling. And uh, oh Lord, look at where his power worked. His power worked in the synagogues. His power worked in the streets. Everywhere he went. Stay down, I'm still down. Everywhere he went, he preached power. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, power is in the kingdom. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Power is innate in the kingdom. Power is in the kingdom. And so everywhere he went, he began to teach in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness. This is what bothers me. How can you believe God to save your soul? I believe he saved my soul and made me whole. Then why can't you believe that he can heal you? There are whole denominations teaching the law of succession. And what that means is that God has ceased to do miracles. That God no longer has apostles, prophets, Pastors, teachers, they, they preaching that you can't get a miracle and that anybody that tells you they're doing miracles, they're lying. But I've come to Hammond to tell you God is still working miracles. Power to heal the sick, to cast out devils. That's the problem with us. We're trying to analyze a devil. You don't analyze a devil. You cast the devil out no matter what he's done. The power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all done got real quiet in here. The power of the Holy Ghost is able to bind that enemy and cast him out of that child. You ought to go home with your sanctified self and lay hands in your house and tell the power of God to manifest in your house. 
He'll save your son. He'll deliver your daughter. He'll save your husband. If you just believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say yes. Yes. God will. God will. He'll do what he said. And because he's doing it, his fame goes out. And people begin to bring him folk that are sick, folk that are confused, folk that have problems. Jesus is healing them. Jesus is casting the devil out. Jesus is changing their minds. And one thing about it, if one person get healed, they gonna bring somebody else that's sick. Because I want you to know that the reward of doing a good job is another job. And the devil is fooling folk. You don't have a season. You only have an anointing. And when that anointing is on your life, you got to use it. You got to use it until everybody hears about it. And they will hear. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't fight the fame. Give God praise in this place. Y'all ain't praising them like you mean it. I need you to shout like God is getting ready to do something. It would have been something if it would have just stuck in Jerusalem. Everywhere that Jesus went, everywhere that he preached, the signs followed. Everywhere, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you expecting a miracle? Oh, when you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, you ought to expect a miracle. Every time you come to New Zion, you ought to expect God to do something. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get nervous when we don't have enough room. That's because the fame has gone out. Don't get worried when we have to get another building. And we have to get a building after that. God is trying to show you who he is. Oh, Lord. And as long as you stay humble, as long as you live righteous, as long as you put God first, he won't make your time limited. So many of us, uh, we hear more about preachers retiring uh, than we hear about them coming into the ministry. I know that there comes a time that you need to set up a son, uh, a Joshua to take your place, uh, a Solomon to succeed you. Uh, but oh, I want you to know uh, that the gift does not retire because we're a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek which is an everlasting priesthood everywhere everywhere I go look at your name and say I'm a preacher everywhere yes yes and I'm not nervous because people know my name I'm not nervous because people stop you in restaurants or stop you in airports. Don't think that you something. Don't get lifted up in pride. It's not because of your suit. It's not because of your hanky. It's not because of the tie. But oh, 
It's because God chose you. God anointed you. God picked you out. God set you up. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor. Don't get mad at me. God did it. Look at your neighbor and say like you mean it. God did it. Yes. Yes. I don't want you to look at these 16 years as the best 16 years. Because they're absolutely not. God got a future. And I heard the Bible say that the glory of the latter house Ah, it's gonna be greater. Somebody holler greater. Ah, greater. I got to quit preaching. Greater. Somebody say greater. I heard the bishop say greater, bigger, brighter. I was riding in the car saying to myself, you all over my message because God is going to have folk to come up to you that you never thought was listening because the gospel is not racial. The gospel is international. For I heard Jesus say that the Father is seeking such a one that would worship him in spirit in truth yeah yes look at your neighbor and say everybody needs God and God has some glory over your life God has some fame over your life yes you may sit there and say pastor I'm not a preacher but you're an entrepreneur and God's going to take your name out the back and put it on the front. It will not be because of your business acumen, but because there was fame in the prophecy. God wants you to understand that he'll make your name great. I'm closing because you're looking at me. But there was a woman that never thought she would be mentioned in the scriptures. Yes, all she had was a little alabaster box. But she brought it to Jesus and she anointed Jesus with it. And Jesus said, everywhere that the gospel is preached, this woman is going to be mentioned. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you may not know my name, but you don't know my work. You may not know my name, but oh, you don't know my anointing. Everybody stand. Oh, Lord. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. I know that God's getting ready to do it. I, I got to quit, but if you believe you're getting ready to do it, I need you to throw your head back and give him a shout of praise right now. Stop walking around with your head down, thinking that's a meek look. That's a look that's something wrong with you. But I heard the Bible say, lift up your head. All ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and 
the king of glory shall come in shout yeah ah yes yes don't fight the fame I never will forget. See, the reason you have to change your perspective is because your future is in his mouth. You got to you got to listen to what the man of God that he's placed over you is saying I never will forget at our church there little church called Shalom Temple pastor prophesied to us and he said if y'all live right God will prove you to the world I believed it. Now, it happened when none of y'all knew what a whining was. But based on what he prophesied, that's how I set my face toward my future. It wasn't based on my talent. It wasn't based on my vocal abilities. It wasn't based on the money I had or the connections. I didn't have nothing. But we were going to the church and pray and fast three days and three nights. The song I wrote, Love is a Spirit, I wrote it right at, at because I was on my face praying in small farms, Indiana. And I had a dream. And in the dream, they were getting ready to introduce us to sing. And there's a group in front of us and they were singing. Jesus gave us for you to hear it, that love is a spirit. And the anointing came in in that dream. So when I woke up the next day, I said, oh my God. And I wrote the song. And I said, Lord, what should I say? He said, what happened? I said, well, there was a time I needed to get away. So I went to Indiana for about five days. All right, you get the record, you get the record. What I'm telling you is the word of God includes the growth of your name being renowned. Sunday, we had guests from Cape Town, South Africa that we had never seen. And the way they got there was because she gives tours of the uh, uh, Cape Table Mountain and they were talking to this white couple that came to South Africa from America and they mentioned that they were from Detroit area and they asked them, said, well, do you know the Winans? He said, do I know the Winans? And they came to Detroit. He was their host because they just had to come. At the same time, somebody there was from New Zealand. Yeah. Then folk were there from California. It's not because I'm a great preacher. It's because the fame was included in the gift. I hope y'all getting this. I don't want you to be stingy. Your pastor has a world international anointing. So folk are going to be coming. Lift those hands. How, how. Go to 
Go to see Sean. How can I say thanks for all the things you've done for me? Things <laughs> so undeserved and yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All oh, that I am, may yonder by or ever hope to be. I owe it all to thee. If you really mean it, lift your hand and say, to God be the glory. Come on. To God To God be the glory for the things he has done. Come on, sing it, church. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. For the things he had. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. Here it is. And should I gain anybody give me any praise? Let it go to care. Oh, the cavalry. Come on, with his blood, he has raised, saved me. With his power, he has raised. Oh, to God be the glory for the things he has done. I need some praise to go right there. Oh, I need some praise. me. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my fame is getting ready to go out. 
if I don't do nothing but bake cakes, bake cookies, wash cars, shine shoes. I heard David say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God, and in his law shall he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not river. Look at your neighbor and say, whatsoever. Whatsoever I lay my hands on it, it's got to be blessed. God is getting ready to anoint your life like you never realized. God is getting ready to anoint your business like you never realized. God is getting ready to anoint your marriage like you never realized. I just need somebody that believes God to throw your head back and promise God I won't fight the fame but I'll give you all of the glory I want everybody. I, I came in during the offering and I gave my 139. I don't know what it was for. I don't know all the things that went with it. I just heard the man of God say 139 and that's what I cashed at. But here, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your offering is for you. Nah, you got to stop people from making this. All the preacher want is your offering. No, they ain't all. That ain't what we want. Because we left jobs to come here and do this. We took pay cuts to come. We're trying to get you to hear God. If you believe the word that was preached tonight. Listen. We're in the project. I, I don't even want to bore you with my testimony. But let me tell you. I'll tell the pastor and if he want to tell you, he'll tell you. But we had an offering, a day of giving, where we asked people to give $1,000. So far, from that day to now, which is just a couple of weeks ago, we've raised over a half a million dollars. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. But here's what has happened. A lady came that Sunday, 17th of September, and gave $1,000. Tuesday, she came to church. She said, Pastor, this Tuesday afternoon Bible class. She said, Pastor, you don't understand. Money that had been tied up for years, they called me Monday and released over $13,000. I'm not making this stuff up. Things are shifting. If you believe what comes out of the man of God's mouth, not a trickster. They had to fill out no apps. They can give me a chicken sandwich and I'm going to be happy. Trust me, I like chicken. Then nobody have to pay me to come here. I, I preach because God told me. So there ain't no contracts, ain't none of that stuff, none of that nonsense. And it is nonsense. Listen to me. Because God told me if I took care of his business, he'd take care of mine. 
I'm in good shape. And it's about to get better. There are at least 20 people that can sow in seed of $100. Now tell somebody, say, I'm giving for this word I've received tonight. And I want those 20 people to lead this offering. Come on, give God praise. This ain't a stair service. I want you to pray. That's not a praise. That's just a patty cake. And those persons that are going to sow a seed of $100, I want you to come and join real quick. I want everybody to get a seed, but we just going to lead it off in faith. Come on, they're coming, they're coming. They had no idea. I didn't have any idea. Just line up, y'all y'all together. Y'all giving y'all 100 together, y'all giving 100 a piece. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Stand, stand, move over in the line so they won't think that y'all just not in the line. Yeah, you can, you can stand next to each other. Yeah, two by two. It makes it easy to count. Cause we gonna get, come on, come on. I need somebody to praise and go. Don't, don't walk out. This ain't the time to leave. Just, just stop, just hold your seat. Whatever you're doing gonna be there when you get there. Just hold your seat. This, uh, this is blessing. I'm, I don't play. This ain't no game with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everyone that can and will. Now, Father, we honor you. We thank you. We bless this seed and we bless the obedience of these that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Is this two? Y'all going to two? All right. It's three, four, five. I need some praise. Six, seven, eight. Hey, yes, nine. Okay, yes. Nine, ten, eleven. Come on. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, ain't no way I'm closing this. Where are my other three folks? Is it, they just got mad. Y'all 18, 19? 18, 19, 20. Somebody shout overflow. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Cash out. There it is right there. NZT Glory Zone. They real spiritual here. Now I want everybody. Come on, there's some more that got a hundred dollar seed that need to give it. Come on up here now. I need a praise to break out. Cause what God is getting ready to do for you, you couldn't pay for. Now everybody stand with a seed in their hand. And make your way to the aisle. Don't wait, just come. Get your seed, whatever it is. $10, $20, $50, $70. Get it and come. I need somebody to give God praise because he's getting ready to make your name great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. They're coming, they're coming. That's it, sweetie. Come on, come on. Oh! Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is going to make your name great. If 
if you believe it, jump to your feet and shout, great! Somebody put a praise on it. Those online, you're sewing online. Come on, Mama Donna. You're sewing in the building. Now let me say this. And I know yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dance a little bit, but I'm going home because I made a promise. But that sermon was so prophetic. Hold on, I'm coming for you, man of God. I love the way you're playing that tambourine. Stay there, but come down for me just a little bit, Christian. Do y'all know how prophetic that man was tonight? Is he not in this house? Did he not speak to our season? Was this not God or was it God? And because God is expanding our borders and because God is birthing fame out of this house, what happens for your leader happens for you. Look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, that prophetic word just wasn't for the head of the house but it's for those who are also in the house. And if you know God's getting ready to build fame out of you, I need you to put a praise on that thing like it's already done. Somebody praise him for the next 30 seconds for what God is releasing. Ha! Your business, your family, your ministry, everything attached to you.
flame is spreading. Somebody stretch like you're getting out the bed. Just Cause he's stretching you. But if you're here and you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, please, I want you to come get to know him. He wants a close relationship with you. He wants a close relationship with you. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. While I'm on. I want, I want Jesus Walk with me, walk with me. Hold, my hand, hold my hand Hold my hand Hold my hand Hold my hand, hold my hand. Oh. Hold my hand. While I'm on this Tear I want Jesus If you're not saved, if you don't have a pastor, let's go fishing. Look to, I'm not, no, 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 no. Look to the left and look to the right of you and ask them two questions. Are you saved? And do you have a pastor? If they say no to either one of those, bring them to me. Walk with me. Oh, yes. Walk with me. I need you, Jesus. Walk with me. I need you, 
Jesus. I need you. Oh yeah, walk with me. I need you to 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 walk with me. I need. I need you to walk with me. Oh yes. I need you to walk. With me. Oh, if Israel don't repent, Jacob will lose his reward. Stand, we're going home. I need you to walk with me. 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 Tomorrow we got Dr. E. Dewey Smith at our Indianapolis location. Friday night, the choir is in full-blown concert. The 90s musical with our musical guest. New Direction, gonna be here. Saturday you get to rest. And then all day Sunday, Pastor Jarrell McDonald in Indy at 8.30. Bishop Brian Moore, that's Chandler Moore's father. Bishop Brian Moore, amen, will be here at 12.30. And Bishop Marvin Sapp, he texted me tonight and said, Bishop, I'm watching with you right now. Bishop Marvin Sapp will be with us. Amen. Amen. And Bishop Marvin Sapp will be with us Sunday night. And how many know October rules? Anything great is born in October. And tonight is Mama Jow's birthday. And she's spending it with her bishop. I love you, mother. I want you to turn up tonight. Where Deke? He over there? We're going to let him out early. So he can bring back the glory. Hey, need you to walk with me. I need you to love. Lord, as we leave this place, never from your divine presence. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. Cover us with your blood as we leave this place. Lord, let us get home safely. Bless everyone that has sacrificed to be with us tonight. Let there be no lack in their home. And God, just as Paul prayed for the church of Philippi when they blessed him i pray the same thing for these people tonight the lord my god shall supply all of their needs according to his riches in glory bless your people according to your riches in glory we receive this and we walk in the favor of it in jesus christ's name amen grace and peace we love you go home in the love of the lord let the power of God be with you. May God be with you in all that you do.